Hi boys and girls. Today we're going to talk some more about zoology. We're going to talk about the study of animals. Remember we said that scientists love to put things into groups. So we took all the things in the whole world. We split them into two big groups, things that are living and things that are not living. And we decided this time we were going to study living things. Then we took all the living things and we split them up into three groups. Do you remember what the three groups were of the living things? One of the groups was animals, one was plants, and one was people. So we decided we wanted to just look at animals. So we got rid of plants and got rid of people, and we kept all the animals in the whole wide world. And we've been working on taking all of those animals and putting them into groups, two big groups. One of those groups are the animals that have bones. Do you remember the big science word for an animal that has bones? That word is a vertebrate. Vertebrate. An animal that does not have bones is called an invertebrate. No bones. Today, I want us to talk more about animals with no bones. Just no bone animals. Just those. So, You'll notice in our picture here that we have different kinds of animals with no bones. We have some insects, like a termite, or a caterpillar, uh, sorry, grasshopper. And down here I have a crab. I put those three together, the termite, the grasshopper, and the crab, because they're all crunchy on the outside. They're crunchy on the outside. And then I put these three together because they're squishy. So we've got a squid. We've got a snail, of course. We love that snail. Sorry, I have to figure out how you can see it best. There we go. And then, oh, these are so cool. Sea slugs. Sea slugs. These are squishy. Really, God made two really distinct kinds of invertebrates. Crunchy ones that have a crunchy outside shell no bones, and squishy ones. The squishy ones mostly, not always, but they mostly live in the ocean. There's a few squishy ones that live on the land. I want you to think about squishy invertebrates for a minute. Can you think of any animals that have no bones and they're squishy? Like if you stepped on it, it would just go you might have actually stepped on one of these outside before. Say it out loud. What are you thinking? Something that's squishy but doesn't live in the ocean. Are you thinking about what I'm thinking about? These are animals that are have no bones. This is a worm. After it rains, have you ever been outside and seen a worm? Worms have no bones. Have you ever gone out and found a slug? Like Mrs. Gevert found a slug. So two groups of invertebrates would be the squishy ones and the crunchy ones. This picture is showing us mostly land animals, worms, slugs, and different kinds of insects and an arachnid, which is a spider. Now, the same two groups work in the ocean. We have squishy undersea animals with no bones, and we have crunchy ones like this here crab. He's almost like the insect of the ocean, isn't he? Are you telling me we eat insects of the ocean? Maybe a little bit. So we've got crunchy invertebrates and squishy invertebrates. None of them have bones. Now if you wanted to learn more about invertebrates, you got to bring home a book from school that looked like this. Sticker Encyclopedia of Animals. It's really cool. And one of the pages in that book is about invertebrates. You could have somebody read it to you, but you don't have to, because here it shows you pictures of sea creatures that are squishy and crunchy, and then land animals as well. You can turn the page, and when it looks like this, this is where you find an animal. These are all invertebrates. They have no bones to match that. What do you think that's going to be? Where are you going to look for it? In the back of the book, there's stickers. I tore mine out so that I could show them to you more easily. 
they look like this. You're looking for the ones that have the words by them. You don't have to be able to read those words. If you want to have a grown-up read them to you, you can. But you, to do the project, you don't need to be able to read them. But you do want to find the stickers with the words by them. And when you find the one that looks like it matches, then you peel it off and you put it in your book. Okay? And if you want to ask later for a grown-up when they're all done with their work to read to you about the Atlas Moth, they can do that. But you can match those up. To find the ones that fit with the colored shaded pages, you need to match them up with the stickers that have words next to them. Okay? Now, in the back of your book, you also have some stickers that have no words. Do you see how those have no words next to them? These are just for fun, for you to use for different things. And then in the very back of the book, you'll find stickers that are super tiny, like this. Okay? You don't need to use those for any particular thing. Well, well actually, we'll talk about it later, what you can use them for. But for the pages where you want to match, match, you need the ones with the words. So you can do that all by yourself. You'll notice that for the page that is about animals that have no bones, you can go ahead and do these pages at home this week. You can do the page about crustaceans. Those are crunchy things that live under the sea like crabs. You can do the page about butterflies and moths. If you can't find it, you're looking for page 49. 48 and 49. You can do the page about beetles. This is towards the back of the book. A page about, I bet you can read that. What does that say? Bugs, that's right. You can do the page about insects and the page about spiders. You're doing all the animals with no bones. And then at the back you'll see, a, well, this is where it ends, but this is a savanna. Remember we talked about savannas where um, lions live? That's where lions would live, but that's not what we're doing right now. Let's go back. Animals with no bones. Those are the pages you would do. Match them up with the stickers that have what? Say it. They have little words next to them. That's how you know you got the right ones. And there's lots and lots of pages, so you have to really search. Sorry, upside down. Here we go. See? Lots and lots of pages. Just looking at that page, which pa pictures here are animals that have no bones? I have to look, too. That cool looking beetle. It's called a giraffe beetle. I wonder why. Beautiful wild, uh, moth. And this is called a thorn bug. And this big, fantastic tarantula. And that and a sea worm. All of those creatures have no bones. So they would all fit on the pages that we're doing right now. Now, if you've already done this, if you've already jumped ahead and worked on your sticker book, that's fine. It's yours to do with as you like. But if you wanted some directions on what to do, you could start with invertebrates. All right. I wanted to show you a couple more pictures of some invertebrates just because they're super cool in my big, heavy book. Look at that. Look at those beetles that God made. Isn't he fabulous? My book is so heavy. That is the kind of beetle that they had in Egypt. It's called a scarab beetle. But look at how many beautiful colors God made the beetles. Aren't they fabulous? Okay, hold on. More beetles. All of these creatures are invertebrates. Say it. Invertebrates. Now this is what I want you to do next. I want you to go outside, ask mom and dad first, can I go outside and look for some animals with no bones? Where could you find them? They're actually pretty easy to find. Even if you have a very tiny little yard, if you even have a parking lot in front of your house, you can ask mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or your babysitter to take you outside and find some leaves find a little bit of grass or some dirt, and you can dig around in there and see if you can find some invertebrates. If you look under things, under pieces of wood, 
under leaves, under anything actually, little tiny creatures will be scurrying around in there. See if you can collect some up and put them in a container and bring them inside. See if you can take one out and put it on the ground and watch it move. See how it moves. See if you can pick it up and look at it really closely and make some observations. Do you remember we said observation is a science word that means look and then keep on looking. Look and then keep on looking, even if you feel a little bored. Even if you think, certainly I should be done looking by now. You just keep looking. It's a long looking and it's a slow looking. So when you're watching that animal move, maybe it's just sitting perfectly still, you're counting. How many legs does it have? What color is it? How many rings are around that worm? You're measuring it. Wonder if when you're done, you could draw a picture of it, a very accurate scientific picture of it. If you do that, please have your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or babysitter take a picture of it for me and text it to me so I can see what you're doing. I would love to see some of the artwork that you made from your observations of looking and keep on looking. The good thing about studying invertebrates is they're everywhere. I even found some invertebrates inside my house today. Do you have invertebrates that sometimes get in your house? I had a wasp in my house and I had a big flying creature that probably shouldn't have been there. That wasn't even a wasp in my house. And I had a stink bug in my house. So there were at least three invertebrates and I'm sure there were more that I hadn't seen inside my house. All right, I'd love to see some pictures of your invertebrates. And before we go, I want to read to you a poem about an invertebrate. Actually, there's lots of poems. I'm just going to pick one of them. I'm going to read you the one called The Cricket. Okay. It's by Marjorie Barrows. The Cricket. And when the rain has gone away and it was shining everywhere, I ran out on the walk to play and found a little bug was there. And he was running just as fast as any little bug could run until he stopped for breath at last all black and shiny in the sun. And then he chirped a song to me and gave his wings a little tug. And that's the way he showed that he was very glad to be a bug. I bet they are very glad to be bugs. Boys and girls, show me what you find. I wanna see pictures of your invertebrates. You can either show me a picture of the real thing or a picture of something that you drew. If mom and daddy say they don't have time, that's okay too. I love you. Remember to say thank you to God out loud every day. Bye-bye.